the people of the world today live their lives inside a control system that most people never even notice exists. It's an extremely sophisticated system, and yet a very simple system. And it exists mostly simply because people believe that it is there. This unquestioning belief in the existence of authority is really a huge problem with the human psyche. And it is a very, very major part of the control system that is in place. But another part of it is the paper-based reality that people are enslaved to, what I call the paper-based matrix that people actually believe is real. Now, over the years, and most especially in recent times, there have been many, many people who have brought this information to you and have sought to explain this paper-based reality to you. There's many people that have brought you information regarding the birth certificate, many people who have suggested that you question the validity and truth of statutes and legislation when they claim to be law. I mean, where do these things come from? Where do legislation and statutes and acts come from? Because when we really know what law is, the true definition of law, you know, the, the, the true law of, of mankind, the true law of creation, the true law of reality, it's basically just the difference between good and bad. There's only actually one law, and that is do no harm. All the rest of it is legislation, simply statutes and acts and rules that people make up. They have these ideas, they write them down on little pieces of paper, and they hit it with a rubber stamp, and then they say, you've got to do that because you put me in a position where I am the one in charge of looking after the infrastructure of this society, and so now you have to do exactly what I say because I'm putting rules in place which are going to preserve and expand and make this infrastructure better for all the people. Well, that's the way it's supposed to be. Really, when you look at it, that's what we have. We employ a government to manage our infrastructure for us and we expect them to improve and expand upon and make this infrastructure more beneficial for society. But what they do is they enact rules instead and they use these rules to corral and control society into a more and more confined and boxed group. And then they steal the resources of the country and exploit the people of the country and sell all the wealth off to foreign interests. That's basically what's going on here. And governments and politicians are very good at convincing people that they need this sort of stuff going on. In fact, governments work very hard to convince people that they need government. The entire concept that we need authority figures to rule over us and to hold our hand for us and pick us up when we fall is completely and utterly erroneous. And it is an idea that has been subconsciously ingrained into people via the governments themselves through the mechanism of the government-controlled education system. Because, you see, that is one of the main purposes of the scholastic system is to instill into people a deep-seated respect for authority. But ultimately, folks, when you really look at this whole control mechanism, it's simply a meme. It's just an idea. Because the entire mechanism only exists on paper and the rules are only given substance through our belief that these rules are real and that they actually apply to us. What government actually is, is a group of elected trustees who are put in place and employed by the people in order to manage our infrastructure for us and to ensure that we have a functional and fair society. But the essential thing to understand about these politicians and about all public servants is that what they are are public trustees because they are put in positions of trust and granted power via the people themselves. In fact, the only power that these people have comes from the people who employ them, and that is you. And if any public trustees, any government officials, any politicians, any public servants at all are enacting legislation or putting rules into place which are causing any type of hardship at all for anybody within their society, then these people are in breach of trust and are abusing the power that we have given them. 
And so that's where the remedy lies, folks. That's where the remedy to all of this situation lies. It lies in the hearts of the people themselves, if they choose to stand up and be counted. And of course, we live in a society where if you even suggest this to someone, they take it as an affront against their ego. They think that you're calling them stupid and they usually want to have a fight with you or something like that. This is all programs, folks. This is the way people are programmed to deal with this information. This is the way people are programmed to react if you even attempt to point out to them that they may be being medicated by their government. Very clever system, folks. And it's this type of attitude that people have which causes other people to police themselves in what they say very very difficult to approach people and suggest these things to them because you are scared of the reaction that it may cause and of course the reaction is generally a programmed reaction as i've just described and you'll find that much of what people say and do in regard to any situation is a programmed reaction very often and there are many programmed situations that happen as well and so you can see the paper-based matrix the legal system the legal fiction that these public trustees create to enslave the people is truly one of the most clever and effective mechanisms that is used. But the only reason it really is as effective as it is, is because people don't understand what they are. We are here to govern ourselves, we're here to know ourselves, we're here to do good in all that we do and to be the best that we can with the creative potential that we are given. That is really what the real purpose of mankind is. But unfortunately, the result of living in concentrated pockets of civilization, such as cities, is a control system and a system of governance and a nanny state, such as we see alive and well in the world today. So what we need to do is to find a mechanism by which we can re-educate people to the power of themselves, help people become aware of themselves, help people express their own creative potential. And so what we have to do to do that is, of course, we need to rein this system in rein our public trustees in and remould this system into one that actually benefits humankind and nurtures humankind's creative potential with a view to leading humankind back to a position where we simply don't need governance at all. I mean, that would be the ultimate achievement, really, to get humankind back to that point. But as I said, we certainly have a lot of work and a long way to go before we will be at that point. One of the best things that you can do is to understand the system of control that has now been imposed over your life. Understand what it is, understand what you are, and begin to take steps to extricate yourself from the system. And really, the best way to extricate yourself from the system is exactly that, to know who you are, to know who and what you are. You should never attack the system, because the system is fiction, it's a clown. If you attack it, you give it value, you give it substance, because you're attacking it. You're creating it into being, you're believing it exists, and because it is fiction, and doesn't actually exist, it only exists on paper, then why are you attacking it? You don't have to attack it. All you have to do is know who and what you are, and you'll find that the blows it attempts to rain on you simply don't work. It's just like a wave beating against a rock. It doesn't do anything. And this is if you are able to stand in the power of your flesh. Because ultimately, flesh is who and what you are. So you need to help people around you gain this knowledge as well because once the whole community remembers who and what they are and remembers how to stand in the power of their flesh then it's game set and match for this whole corporate system because at that point the corporate fiction will cease to exist because it only exists now in people's minds but once people can change what they believe is possible and what they believe is real and adjust their mindset and change their perspective, then the corporate fiction simply fades away like the cloud that it is. But what I'm attempting to do with all this, folks, is help you come to the realization that you are a living spirit inhabiting a vessel of flesh and that nobody owns you. Nobody can control you apart from yourself and that all you really need to know about law is the difference between good and bad. And as far as the legal fiction goes and the slavery system that is there to control you, there are only two words you need to know within that whole legal system which will help that system comprehend who you are. And those two words are sui generis. 
or sui generis, as some people call it. When you can truly understand what you are, the absolute miracle of your existence, and it is, it is an absolute miracle, folks. I mean, think about it. You are a biological entity of flesh and blood and organs with this electromagnetic frequency running through you, and you are conscious. You are conscious. You can think. You can create. Look at what we've created. Look at this world, all the buildings we've built, the art, the wonderful things that we've done, and the damage that we've done, all of it. This is all because of who you are. This has all been created by human beings. This is incredible. Really think about that. Think about the power of your flesh to create, the power of an idea to create the world that we've got, the power of an idea to be free, the power of an idea to be a slave. Which idea are you going to have? And is it your idea? Think about the miracle of yourself, and it's, it's astounding. It truly is astounding. When you can really grasp the wonder of your existence, you may think about it and go, yeah, yeah, it's really, really amazing. But then one day, the true profoundness of the fact that you are here may just hit you. And when the penny drops, you will go, oh, my God, this is incredible. And what it has the potential to be is astronomical absolutely astronomical we are capable of so much were we not locked into this box of fiction that has been constructed for us this disempowered box of fiction and to be controlled by legal fiction stuff that exists on paper ideas that were put there by other people and we were told that this idea is reality but is it really your idea it's not it's just someone else's idea because that's all this system is it's just the idea that authority is real the idea that the control mechanism exists the idea that words on paper actually mean more than what is in your heart that's what this system is and it's ludicrous because it's all fiction the control grid that you believe you have to be subservient to is just someone else's idea The concept that your flesh is owned by somebody else and that you are subject to their authority is just someone else's idea. The fact that you have to pay to be alive, again, is somebody else's idea. Now, we are all caring, giving, good people. Most of the world are good people. Some of them aren't, but most of them are. The best way for you to change the world is to change yourself to change the way you view reality, change the way you view yourself, and change the way you view other people. You need to understand the power that you have, and you need to lead by example in all that you do. Be a shining light in your community and encourage others to do the same. That really is our only way out of this situation. And now's the time that we can do it. Now is a time better than any other time in history. All we have to do is pay attention and step up to the challenge.